Hey guys, the following is a clip from my interview with Metallica producer Fleming Rasmussen, the producer behind Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and Injustice for All. If you want to see the full interview, it's linked below. So when it comes to the recording process for Ride the Lightning, from what I understand, you recorded Lars's drum parts in a warehouse? Yeah, uh, also on Master of Puppets, yeah. Was there any particular reason why you chose the warehouse to record his drum parts? To get a really good drum ambience, to get the, the sound to be as loud as possible. And on all the albums we did, there was this mantra called no reverb. So instead of using reverb, I just recorded the sounds of the rooms we recorded in. Because that way you get some depth in the, in the stereo picture. So, so we used a lot of room mics and stuff. That's why I put him in that room. It, it was a bit of a challenge because I think it was cold winter and we had to heat the room. It was like freezing outside. So we had these gas heated that kind of heated the room, which meant that we had to get a guy in and tune the drums all the time. But, you know, it turned out good. So there you go. So in terms of your relationship with Lars, from what I understand, you essentially gave Lars drumming lessons during Ride the Lightning. Is this correct? Yeah, that's that's actually true. That's that comes from Lars being from a jazz background, because I think I can't be sure about this, but but I'm I'm pretty sure that Lars's focus uh, with Metallica was on doing all these great fills. So I think the way Lars saw the songs was I have this fill that goes da da da, then it's you know, and then this fills come in comes in, and I think he never gave it much thought that you know. What happens between the fills, you have to be fucking steady and, and there has to be an equal length between the, the, the kick and the snare and all the all this stuff. So yeah, me and, and uh, Jake, his uh, his real name is also Fleming, but his drum roadie at the time, who was a drummer for a Danish band called Maltese Falcon, I think, uh, we kind of, you know, told him, then you go boom, boom, you know, took his leg and went, you do this and then you do this with the snare and they have to be, and he, I don't think he ever thought about that. He just thought about putting energy into the song. So basically he played like a jazz drummer. You listen to what everybody else is doing. You do something that fits in. Fine. Next song. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know, another one of the great songs on Ride the Lightning is For Whom the Bells Toll. How did you guys get that bell sound specifically? I'm pretty sure... I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's Lars hitting an anvil with a metal hammer. And then we sped it down so it sounded like a bell. But, I mean, they have the tape, so obviously they use that sound for the live shows. But it is, it, it's either that or we stuck, took it off some uh, effects album, and which was a vinyl then. You know, you buy it and then you have the right to use it on. But I'm pretty sure because we carried the studio was on the first floor and we carried that animal up to the first floor and it was like seriously heavy, and Lars was banging away on it. It was it was actually pretty. It was one of the funny moments when we did that album. Lars, so Lars hitting the animal. No, not on one. Lars on two. Yeah. What the fuck is two? <laughs> <laughs> he just put it where he felt for it. Lars, Lars is. Lars has grown up in a jazz family, so so Lars is playing. Is he always when he plays, he listens to what everybody else is doing and fits in. People saying Lars is, is a bad drummer, they I think people who says that kind of exclude themselves, in my opinion, because they don't know what they're talking about. It's like people saying Ringo Starr is a bad drummer; they have no idea. I don't know why what that is all about. It's not. It's probably people who play instrument themselves and think they're technically good. But, you know, that's not what it's about. It's about playing music. And if you don't have that musical mind, uh, you can be as technically good as you, as you want. If you can't play with other people, you're fucked. You know, I read somewhere that the part in one where the drums start to mimic the sound of machine guns, you got that in one take. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff Lars was in the champion at at the time. So yeah, that that was, I was I was actually disappointed because I was looking forward to hearing that that particular part of the song <laughs> like a couple of times. But it was like, okay, fine, good, next. And he was like, what? Yeah, fine, come and have a listen. He didn't believe it himself. We heard it and went, okay, we'll go on. <laughs> I've always thought Lars was a great drummer. So you know, I know a lot of people who says he can't play drums, but I mean, what do they know? 
So, yeah, no, he's a great drummer. And he, he'd, he'd gotten technically better at that point. That doesn't necessarily mean you're a better drummer, that you're technically better, but if, if you have the musical understanding and, and the insight Lars has, that made him a better drummer, yeah. As James says, he's the best drummer in Metallica ever. So, there you go. <laughs> And so how did he develop as a drummer from Ride the Lightning to Injustice? Well, all of them actually developed tremendously. And, and you know, they, it, it was a huge development, both both in their playing skills, but also in their uh, also in their songwriting. In my opinion, they got better and better musicians from from album to album. But in, with Metallica, we've always done we've always set the bar really high. Actually, they've always aimed to do stuff they couldn't do. So actually, they were all, they were always pushing themselves to be better and better, and it was like that with all the albums I've done. And basically, they they weren't able to perform their own songs because they were too difficult. But we got it on tape anyway, which is a great way to develop as a musician, and you know, just basically get get your chops together. So yeah, I mean, they they developed tons during that and and even also with the songwriting i mean in my opinion they've gotten better and better at songwriting as well throughout their whole life so yeah they developed a lot a lot of people say that lars is the businessman of the band so to speak would you agree with that is that fair to say i think so yeah i think lars is uh, you know a, a good entrepreneur and it, it's because the drive and energy lars has that you know he's been booking concerts left and right to make sure they come out and play which is the best way to present your music so fleming when you first started working with metallica essentially they reached out to you how did that all come together it was Lars calling up, I'm, I'm, as far as I recall, asking whether I would be interested in doing a metal band from, from San Francisco. And I went, yeah, great. I mean, but you're Danish, so what, you know. Um, so uh, they had kind of done the math and, and, and figured out that for the same amount of money they would pay for a week in, uh, in, the, in a studio in the States, and they were not happy with the sound on kill them all they could get two weeks in europe plus they could then go and and you know do some shows and actually make money to do the album because they were on an independent label they didn't have like a label backup so 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 they wanted to uh, they wanted to tour record tour record more and they, as far as I've been told, they, they actually, they, they've heard about me because of the job I did with, uh, with Blackmore. And I think they sat down and heard some of the albums I've done. And, and then they decided, well, that's what we're doing. We're going to go to Europe. We're going to record the album. And at the same time, or during, during that, they got Q Prime as management. So they started looking for major record label deals. But, I mean, basically, they just called and asked if I was interested. And I've, I said, yes, sure. And we actually started the process out once they got to the studio and we, we needed to start recording. We actually started out by listening to Kill Em All because there's the famous uh, break-in incident in, in their uh, live truck. So, so they get most of their equipment stolen. And, and James had a modified Marshall amp that he really likes, and of course nobody knew what the modification was. So, so we actually listened to Kill Em All a couple of times and, and some of the guitar sounds. So I got a pretty good picture of what the band was all about before we started. We did a session in the studio where we, we got everybody that I knew on the metal scene then, which was kind of just starting out, but you know, people that had good Marshall gear, I had them bring all their amps and all their cabinets to the studio, and James would, you know, play them all and, and figure out which one he wanted to record on. 